Hi, welcome to this lesson on classification of matter. Question of the day, what do you already know about matter? To start off, matter is anything that has both mass and volume. So whether it be a solid, a liquid, a gas, that does not matter. So long as it has mass and volume, we call it matter. Now the most basic form of matter is called a chemical element. And we have 118 of them on the periodic table. Um, this is as basic as it gets. If you can think of matter kind of like a language, the letters of the alphabet would be the elements. The words that they make are called compounds. And this would kind of be like your alphabet. These are the building blocks of everything that is matter. Elements can combine to create bonds with other elements. And in doing that, they will form other forms of matter. The tiniest piece of an element is called an atom. There are two types of elements. The first are monatomic elements, which are most of the elements on the periodic table. This means that when you find them in nature, you, not that we could see them, but they do exist as single atoms. So this could be gold, this could be helium, this could be calcium. <laughs> those atoms will like go off on their own individually and go find other atoms to bond with. The second type of element is called a diatomic element. And there are only seven diatomic elements. And what happens is that they have a very small radius and a very high electronegativity. And those two values come into just the sweet spot that those elements in particular are not willing to go throughout nature without having a full octet. That's the basis of it. So these seven elements are always going to bond to another atom of the same element in order for them to achieve some extra stability. Your seven diatomic elements, we commonly refer to them as Brinkelhoff because it kind of sounds like it's a name or a word maybe. Um, but those elements are the seven halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine, plus we have oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen, Brinkelhoff. Those will always come in twos. If there is one little fluorine atom floating around in space, there is a second one right nearby. Those two fluorines are going to bond to each other because it gives them some extra stability. Anytime two different elements come together and form a bond, they are going to form what's called a compound. I specify different because we just spoke about those diatomic elements. These are still called elements. F bonded to F is not a compound. That is a diatomic element. It does make a fluorine molecule though. So this chemical bond is going to be in between those two elements held together. They form a compound. Compounds have all of their letters of their chemical formula squished together. So in water, hydrogen and oxygen have no space between them to indicate that the atoms are bonded. Compounds can be broken apart, but the only way to do that is with a chemical reaction. So right here we have a combustion. This is specifically methane, carbon, and four hydrogens is going to react with two oxygen molecules to form a molecule of carbon dioxide and two water molecules. The smallest piece of a compound is called a molecule. Again, this is methane, so the entire CH4 makes the molecule and then atoms are individual circles here. So here we have four hydrogen atoms and one carbon atom. A mixture is a combination of elements and compounds in the same place at the same time. So here is an example of a mixture. We have compound one, which is the green and reds, and then we have compound two, which is this very light blue and very light yellow. This is a mixture of two compounds. The chemical formula of a mixture will be indicated in a few different ways. Number one, we will have a plus sign indicating that the water and the salt are in the same place at the same time, or we may have something like this. NaCl and then small in parentheses AQ. 
This AQ stands for aqueous. Sometimes it's pronounced aqueous and it just means dissolved in water. So again, you're being told that sodium chloride and water are in the same place at the same time. Mixtures can be broken apart from each other using some type of physical change. Typically, this is going to involve a phase change, but not always. We will talk very much in depth about how to separate mixtures or components of a mixture, um, because it really does depend on what the components of that mixture are. But just know that because mixtures are just physically in the same place at the same time, all we need is a physical change to separate them from each other. We have two types of mixtures. The first is called a homogeneous mixture. Some will pronounce it homogeneous. And this mixture has components that you can't see with your own eyes. So if this were salt and water, let's say, um, you can't tell that this is salt and water just by looking at it. And that's what makes it a homogeneous mixture. All of the salt has been 100% dissolved in this water. Because it's dissolved in water, we call that an aqueous solution. And specifically, we would say that this homogeneous mixture of salt and water is considered unsaturated, meaning that we have the ability to dissolve more salt if we really wanted to. Now, a heterogeneous solution is one where it does have visually distinguishable components. Typically, we're going to have some type of layers. So in this case, we have a saturated solution, meaning it's the solution is holding the maximum amount of salt so much that any extra salt added is going to sink to the bottom of the container like you can see right here. Um, this is heterogeneous because we have a salt water mixture and then we have this um, lump of wet salt just hanging out at the bottom of the container. We have layers. We have a solid layer at the bottom and then we have this aqueous layer and then we have this aqueous layer sitting up top. So in total, we have a few different parts of matter. We have all of matter broken down into two groups, really. Pure substances and mixtures. Pure substances include elements and compounds, and then your mixtures, of course, are homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson. I know this kind of feels like it's a trick because it's so easy compared to what we were just doing with stoichiometry. It will get a little bit tougher, but this is where uh, we start talking about macro chemistry. So what that really means is that instead of talking about individual atoms and molecules, we instead are talking about full on substances that we can see with our own eyes. So while we get introduced to macro chemistry, it will feel a little simple, but rest assured the challenge will come shortly. See you there. Bye.